Hi, I'm Mike DiStefano, President of the Corn Ferry Institute, and today we have an opportunity to sit down with Lieutenant General Retired Franklin Hagenbeck and talk about cybersecurity. General Hagenbeck is a board director and serves on numerous for-profit and not-for-profit boards. Well, thank you, General. Uh, I'd like to see if we could start with perhaps just talk a little bit about where the world of cybersecurity has come from and kind of where we are today and what risks you may see going forward. Well, thanks for having me, but uh, in cybersecurity and has come dramatically uh, down a fast road in the last 10 years. You know, when we think back a decade, we're looking at uh, and thinking in terms of having our credit cards compromised, medical records to some degree, uh, but it's expanded much beyond that, uh, not only to the financial sector here in America and across the world, but also now targeting of uh, critical infrastructure from dams, electrical grids, uh, railroads even that are there. And so the, the entire global community is taking this on right now and they know how very dangerous it could be for any kind of misstep. Can you talk a little bit about your work with the military and the other sovereign nations that you're working with and kind of some of the topics that you're exploring? I'm a part of a small group that meets with a foreign dignitary, some military and some former intel officers, and we focus on this as one of the major topics. In fact, I'm going to be meeting next week uh, in Europe uh, on this very topic. It'll be the third time that we've discussed it. And we try to share information that can go back to our governments to assure them that uh, how we can protect ourselves against attacks and missteps. So today, what would you guys say are some of the greatest risks that the world is facing in terms of cybersecurity? Well, the greatest risk right now are is if some nation decides that because they've been attacked uh, through cyber, uh, that they're going to respond in kind and something that could escalate. I mean, that's another domain of, uh, of the world, just like we talk about air, land, sea, and space. Cyber is another one. And nations are looking at this and they do not want to compromise what they view as their security. And we want to ensure that they don't take any radical steps if this happens. So how do the different countries work together? And what, is, what are you trying to get out of this task force? Well, part of the task force is one, to understand the situation and the environment that we're in. And the other part, globally, but also uh, through financial institutions, we're trying to recognize wh what are we willing to share for best practices? And that's the real difficulty and complexity that we have right now. Because we have our own self-interest as a country. Uh, if you're in the financial community, you're competing against like-minded financial institutions. And how much are you willing to share best practices where you don't lose your customers or you don't lose the potential of protecting your society? And that's really what we're wrestling with right now. Well, cybersecurity in the private sector is a little bit different than we talked about globally and militarily. Uh, and then there are some similarities. One of the, the things that is different, I think, is that uh, going back to the notion of best practices, up to a point, uh, these companies are willing to, to participate in that discussion. But what they face that uh, most governments and militaries don't face is the loss of talent. I mean, you talk right here in Manhattan alone, all the different financial institutions, uh, and if we're going to compete with each other, I may go after your mid-grade talent to bring it, and then to bring your secrets, if you will, in cybersecurity to it. So there's a real hesitancy. Uh, we're not sure which direction we're going to go in the, with those institutions, but it's something they're wrestling with right now. And do you want to share some thoughts on the role of the board in terms of cybersecurity and, and kind of what's their role overall? Uh, sitting on a number of uh, nonprofit and for-profit uh, boards, I can tell you that uh, we hold fiduciary responsibility. We're held responsible for that uh, by our clients. Uh, not so in the cyber world, and I think that that's the next step that we need to take. I don't think boards can ignore it or say it's someone else's problem when it comes to any of that that's associated with it, and I think we have to explore, I'm talking the corporate world, ways to get at that because it's just as important as the financial domain. Great. And what's the expectation that um, a board should put on its management in terms of uh, risk mitigation, but also communication back to the board? Well, I think it ought to be a topic of every time a board meets. Most boards meet two to four times a year, and we spend an ordinary amount of time going over the financials. I think we ought to spend that kind of time going over the cyber as well. I think it's only a matter of time before most organizations suffer some kind of breach, whatever that may be. What would you say is, is, again, the role of the board, but also steps that an organization should take uh, immediately upon discovering a breach of any cybersecurity? Well, I think breaches of cybersecurity happen every single day. I mean, the, the Pentagon has put out that they're hacked up to 100,000 times per day. 
and they know exactly what countries are doing this and how this works. I think the important thing is that protocols exist such that we can confront those particular countries with this so that we don't have a misstep along the way and do something very radical. Now, we wouldn't do that as the United States, but some of these rogue nations that hack into us and others would do the very same thing. And when you talk about the financial community, it's global as well. So uh, big things could happen there, and we talked about infrastructure, critical infrastructure. We have to have protocols in place that are agreed upon by nations such that nothing uh, gets blown out of proportion when something bad happens. General Hagebeck, thanks so much for taking the time this afternoon. We know you're a busy guy and we really appreciate it. I enjoyed it. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks.